Every now and then we get a few comments asking about the safety of recycling plastic at home. Okay, maybe more than a few. All right, all right, fine. We'll do a video on it. This video is sponsored by Blinkist. Understand the most important ideas from a huge range of books in just 15 minutes. So a running theme in the comment section or when we talk to others about recycling is that a lot of people tend to refer to plastic as one material. When in fact, there are so many different types and grades of plastic. And this is an important factor when it comes to thinking about how safe a plastic is to work with. Some plastics can be recycled very safely, but there are others that we would never go near. Now, as you may already know, we are not molecular scientists or chemical engineers. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> Scientists. But we do have a decent amount of experience and we've learned a lot about the safety aspects of plastic squishing over the last three years. So the first thing that we need to clarify, and is probably the most important thing of all, is that we're melting plastic and not burning it. Every single plastic is highly toxic when burnt, which is where we think a lot of the confusion comes from with plastic safety. As long as you know the correct melting points of the plastics you want to work with, you can work with these safely. Well, um, not, not all of them actually. <laughs> Like we mentioned already, there are many different types of plastics and each of these have their own different melting and burning temperatures. If you work with unseparated plastic, then there's no way to accommodate all of these different melting temperatures at once, meaning that some will burn before others are fully melted. We hand separate all of our plastic to make sure we're not mixing it into different types, which is the only way to ensure that we're doing it completely safely. This is why it's so important for plastic manufacturers to add the Resin ID logo onto any plastic product made to make sure that it can always be identified. Well, they should really just stop using plastic in the first place. Yes, Dr. Plastic. Yes, they should. Not only are plastic manufacturers the absolute worst for still using virgin plastic, but a lot of them don't even mark their products with the correct resin codes, making it extremely difficult to sort it all out properly. Now there are some ways you can identify plastic at home, and we are planning a full video on how you can do this. We recently received this Plastel from a company called Matoa, which is a device that can scan a piece of plastic and identify what type it is. Game changer. Matoa have also very kindly offered Brothers Make viewers 5% off their Plastel device. Use code BROTHERSMAKE16, we'll pop a link with all the instructions of how to use it in the description below. Okay, let's say you've meticulously separated all of your plastic. No more fumes, right? No, wrong! Bits of food, sticky labels, or residue from the contents can burn whilst you're heating the plastic. These can create some potentially very harmful and some pretty gross smelling fumes. Mesh bags in the washing machine are a great way to clean loads of bottle tops all at once. For other items like bottles, we simply cut them in half and then wash them by hand. So much like we're trying to distill all of the information that we know about plastic safety into one concise video, today's sponsor does the exact same thing but with books and podcasts. Blinkist allows you to understand the important takeouts and concepts into a series of short blinks which cover a whole range of topics from over 5,500 non-fiction books and podcasts. You can tell they've really taken in and understood each book and then reproduced it in a 15 minute bite-sized version which is both entertaining and actually really easy to understand. For us it's been an awesome way to start our day as we can listen to one together on the way into the workshop which we think is way better than listening to the radio. The latest one that we listened to was How Bad Are Bananas by Mike Berners-Lee who essentially calculates the carbon footprint of pretty much everything. For example, did you know that the carbon footprint of a 500ml bottle of water is over a thousand times greater than that of tap water? It also gives you a load of ideas which are easy to implement on how to live a greener lifestyle, which is something that we're definitely trying to do this year. They've also just launched a brand new feature, Blinkist Connect. This feature allows every premium user to share their account with someone else, like a partner or a friend. So if you fancy giving Blinkist a try, you can start your seven day free trial by going to blinkist.com forward slash brothers make. And if you like it as much as we have, they're offering brothers make viewers 25% off Blinkist premium, where you can enjoy two memberships for the price of one with Blinkist Connect. Thank you so much to Blinkist is sponsoring this video. Now onto the next part of plastic safety, temperatures. So now you have your beautifully clean and sorted plastic ready to go, the next thing you need to think about is your melting temperature. We've shown a number of different ways that you can recycle plastic on our channel, so if you're new here, a good one to start with would be our seven ways video, which we've linked down below. 
the important thing to remember here is that you want to apply the lowest amount of heat for the shortest period of time. This brings us to the reason that we love using HDPE on a panini press so much. HDPE will start to melt at around 120 degrees Celsius, but the ideal temperature window to work with it is between 180 and 260 degrees. The maximum temperature that the plastic has ever gotten to on our panini press is 180 degrees, which is right at the bottom of this range. And because there is direct heat from both the top and the bottom, the plastic melts quickly and efficiently. However, it is not the perfect tool for other types of plastics. More on that in a minute. There's lots of information available online about the melting temperatures of different types of plastic. Precious Plastic have made this really handy poster which is available to download online. We'll link this below and it just gives you a nice visual representation of the different melting temperatures. Right, now let's talk about the big one, fumes. <laughs> They're actually called volatile organic compounds. <laughs> There are two things to consider for each type of plastic when you're looking at the fumes they give off. The amount of fumes that they make and the toxicity of those fumes. You can't just look at one of these in isolation as it doesn't give you the full picture. Again, the clever people over at Precious Plastic have created this lovely chart which shows you the different amounts of fumes made by each different type of plastic. Looking at this chart, you might be thinking, lovely, I'm gonna stick to recycling just these four types of plastic. That sound good, dog? Um, no, that's completely incorrect. What are you doing now? Sudoku. The one time I need you. <laughs> the seven. If you take PVC as an example, the fumes created are so horrendously toxic to both humans and the environment that you should just never work with it. We certainly don't. So the safest plastics to work with are polypropylene and polyethylene, which includes both HDPE and LDPE. Both of these produce low amounts of fumes and the fumes that they do produce are non-toxic, so they can be recycled at home safely. Assuming that the plastic is clean and melted at the right temperature. Clean, additive-free HDPE is the safest plastic you can work with. But definitely think about the source of the plastic. For example, if it's a container that contains chlorine, you should absolutely avoid that. Also, plastic that was designed to live outside may have UV stabilizing additives, which is also something to consider. This is why we love working with milk bottle tops and shampoo bottles, because they're super easy to clean and safe to melt. We've had a lot of schools message us to say they're using our techniques to melt plastic in the classroom, which we think is absolutely brilliant. And we get a lot of teachers asking us for safety information around this to make sure that it's safe to do in lessons. We've recently worked with Clear Apps to help them produce a guidance document and risk assessment about HDB recycling. So if you work at a school, you should be able to access this. Let's tackle another hotly debated topic in the YouTube comments. Do you need to wear a face mask when melting plastics? <laughs> Respirator. Respirator. The answer? Well, it depends. It all comes down to three things. The type of plastic you're melting, the temperature that you're melting it at, and how good the ventilation in your area is. Let's look at our panini press as an example. Using HDPE means no toxic fumes as long as it's clean and we don't burn it. Using the panini press keeps the temperature nice and low. In our case, we tend to keep a window open to make sure it's well ventilated, which keeps any potential smells at bay. Taking all of this into consideration, we would say that a respirator isn't necessary. But say you just change one of those things, then you'll need to reassess whether you need one. For example, if we stick with HDPE, but swap out our heating method from a panini press to something like one of our injection molding or extrusion machines, then this could change things a bit. The reason is, is that we run these machines at a slightly hotter temperature so that we can make products faster. At 230 degrees Celsius, we're still within the safe window, but there is a higher chance of plastic getting stuck in the barrel and being heated for longer than we want. Therefore, personally, we choose to use respirators when using these machines, as we tend to be using them for an extended period of time. You can also use a fume extractor to reduce the fumes at the source. These machines suck the fumes away and pass them through a carbon filter to kill off the toxic stuff. The one we're using comes from Plastic Planner. Normally, we tend to use all three methods just to be safe. A well-ventilated workspace, a fume extractor, and a respirator. This way, if we decide to work with a material such as polystyrene that gives off more fumes, we know we're safe and protected. Also, the face mask, respirator, and filters that you choose are super important. You can't just use a regular dust mask. You need ones with special filters that will capture any potential nasty fumes. The ones we always use and recommend are called ABEC-1 filters, which fit onto a standard 3M respirator. These filters will protect you for 40 to 50 hours before they need replacing. Make sure that you get a face mask that fits you really well with no leaks. We also like to store ours in these airtight containers to ensure that the filters last as long as possible. 
Well, there you go, folks. Hopefully that gives you a bit of a guide when it comes to safety with DIY plastic recycling. We're sure that with new research and your input, then there's probably loads of more information on this topic that we haven't covered. We'll be sure to include any of the biggies in the description below as and when we hear about them. So be sure to keep an eye on that for updates. Massive thank you to you guys for watching and to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check the link in the description if you're interested. Oh, and there's, there's one more. Here we go. There's one more thank you. Yep. Oh, you know, it's the Brotherhood. Thank you so much, guys. I went tame. <laughs> I, I went tame. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. You are the ones keeping our workshop lights on. We love you. Mwah. See you on the next one, guys. Oh, Ah, surprise! I am Dr. Plastic. <laughs> You're impressed with our new our prop budget. It's good, isn't it? Bye!